Today's tutorial is going to be centered on identification of automobile air conditioning parts, which we have the compressor, the condenser, the condenser fan, the filter dryer slash accumulator, the expansion valve slash orifice tube, the evaporator and evaporator blower. The compressor, as the name implies, compress the gas, which is the refrigerant, and pass through the condenser. And the condenser is where the compressed refrigerant changes its state from gaseous to liquid, then pass through the filter dryer. The work of the filter dryer is to separate moisture from the compressed refrigerant and also metal debris, then pass through the expansion valve slash orifice tube which causes the pressure drop and further regulate the amount of refrigerant that will pass, liquid refrigerant that will pass into the evaporator. The evaporator is where it now loses its coolness to the interior of the car and further changes its state from liquid to gaseous. Because liquid is incompressible, then go back to the compressor and the cycle repeats itself. <laughs> this is the compressor. This particular compressor is a sensor compressor. And here is the sensor. And this one is the manual tab, which is controlled by the magnetic clutch. I have my condenser here with me, and the condenser is always located in front of the radiator. I have my standard filter dryer here. I have the part tab, which is internal. It's always located by the side of the condenser. If you open here, this way it goes in. And here is my condenser fan. It's always located at the back of the radiator. <coughs> I have my expansion valve here. As I said earlier, the work of the expansion valve is to cause pressure drop and further regulate the amount of refrigerant that will pass into the evaporator. <coughs> uh, I have here my evaporator and it's always buried inside the dashboard. So I will also show you this, the orifice tube. <coughs> In some system that has accumulator, that will, that will use orifice tube in place of expansion valve. I have my manifold gauge here. Manifold gauge here with me. This is the high side and this is the low side. This one is always connected to the low side, high side of the, the refrigerant uh, circuit. Why this one goes to the low side, and this one will go to your refrigerant bottle. I also have with me here the, um, uh, the vacuum pump. It is always good anytime you're working on a refrigerant, when the system is open or after completing your work, it's always good to vacuum it out. Because air and refrigerant does not mix. If it's mixed, it causes acidic corrosion. Vacuum it till the needle get down to 28 to 29 inch of mercury before charging it up with refrigerant. I also have with me here digital manifold gauge. In this digital manifold gauge, depending on the car that I'm going to work on, when I get to the point that I'm going to recharge up the system, I'll bring up my digital manifold gauge. This digital manifold gauge contains all the cars and model and years. Like for example now, I have selected this one to Toyota Forerunner 1996 to 2002 model. When you select it, it will now display the amount of gas that's supposed to go into the system and also the quantity of oil 
that's supposed to go into the refrigerant system. You know the compressor is a moving part and it, re it requires oil to lubricate it. If you put too much gas into the refrigerant system, it will cause issue to the compressor. If you, under, if you also put, not putting the required oil, the required quantity, it will also cause issue to the compressor. For example, I have my oil measuring tip here, my oil measuring instrument. This is calibrated in two horns. Let's say, for example, now the Toyota 4Runner 1996 to 2002 takes 7.61 ohms of oil. And this, my oil measuring instrument, is quantified for only two ohms. That means I will put it to two ohms till it completes the required quantity. Keep subscribing, keep following Time Auto Global Limited if you really want to know about automobile air conditioning.